Hello everyone, it's Robert Evans, and we are back with another episode of the story behind the image. We are back with episode seven. So if you haven't seen any of those, you can go back and look. Uh, but I wanted to welcome everybody in and stay tuned and sit back and watch. So basically what this is, is uh, these are some of my favorite images that I've shot over the last 30 years, and I'm sharing some of the stories behind the image. So let's jump right in. Before we do, I, I just wanted to invite you back. If you haven't uh, seen any of our previous episodes, if you're new to the channel, go back. We do all sorts of things, uh, shooting live with Sony stuff. These are some of our previous episodes. I just recently reviewed the 21.8. I got to shoot it back in February in Las Vegas at WPPI. Other stories of the story behind the image, dog sled racing with the Sony A9, uh, hockey images with the Sony RX100. Uh, so it's all sorts of great content. Go back and check it out. All right, this first image is an image that I took many, many years ago. So this image uh, was an engagement shoot and it was shot in a coffee shop in Pasadena, California. And uh, shot on a Hasselblad with film, so medium format Hasselblad. That's how far back we go. Um, and one of the stories I love about this image, it was probably, you know, one of my favorite images for a while. Um, but at the same time, uh, it was the couple's favorite image. And even years later, uh, after I did their wedding, they came back, had some family portraits done. I'd done some other family members' weddings. And uh, the groom said to me that he had this image on a little frame on his desk. And... Uh, an employee walked by, he was an attorney, I believe, and an employee walked by one day and said, when are you gonna put a picture in that frame? So the person actually thought it was a stock image, and so it was kind of a big compliment to me, um, but I really loved it. So, story behind that one. This image, did you see the whole, the whole thing? Uh, so this image was actually a recent wedding, so we go back 25 plus years to now, uh, just this last year, um, or the end, I guess, of 2019. This was an image that I shot in a restaurant. This couple had a very small wedding in a little restaurant, and this was their first look. And the great thing about this is that um, it was in the middle of a busy restaurant, so one of the things that uh, I wanted to try to accomplish uh, was obviously minimize the people in the restaurant. It was very busy, very crowded. Um, they had their ceremony in a little back room, but they met here at the bar because this is where they actually met on their first date many years prior. So same two positions, same two seats, but I just love the image. I mean, the expressions, uh, I think what makes it for me in this one especially is the groom's tongue out of his mouth and just he's giddy. Um, I shot this with a uh, 2414 uh, on my Sony a7 III um, because I wanted to make sure I could minimize the background, so I wanted to shoot at a shallow depth of field. Uh, but for one of my more recent images and, and the challenge, you know, a lot of times choosing the right equipment to make the image work is key. So again, I knew I had a lot of available light. I could shoot wide open because I wanted to minimize my background. Um, and again, just try to be as uh, invisible as possible as I could in the middle of the restaurant. I was right up against the other side of the bar. I did ask uh, someone to scoot over just a little bit for me, which of course they were happy to do because of this wedding. All right, the next image. This was a wedding that I also did in 2019. And one of the things about this image um, is that the bride asked me, you know, they said we have this really cool mirror um, and well, both brides, of course, but the, the one of the two, Lori, had asked me to make sure that I got a really great picture of the mirror. And of course, you know, I would have shot that during decor. But as they did their grand entrance and they came into the room, um, you can see, uh, I saw that, you know, I thought ahead of time, like, oh, I bet I could get their reflections when they walk in the room. So I positioned myself in such a way that I made sure that I got them in the in the image. So yes, I shot a decor image, of, but how cool is this where I sort of included them, welcome to our wedding, they're walking in the room, hands up, right as the uh, MC announced them. And they were super thrilled about this. Um, 
So it's sometimes, you know, for me, I, I talk about this a lot, but I shoot 90% of the weddings for myself, meaning that I have to go out and please myself. Uh, and so it's images like this that I'm not just doing the basics and getting by and, and shooting just the decor image. Like I'm shooting something that's really interesting to me and that I know that my couples will really love. Okay. So now this image uh, is an engagement shoot. Now I always do my engagement shoots uh, usually on location, I ask my couples, hey, take me to some place that's important to the two of you. It could be a place you got engaged, first date, uh, that type of thing. Um, and that's what we do. So it's always my challenge to, to shoot great images. Well, this particular couple, uh, Sam and Heidi, who I did their wedding, I don't know, it's probably been, I just saw their anniversary on Facebook or something, and it was 15 years ago, 10 years ago, really hard to believe that that much time has passed. But I remember them telling me, this, this was shot in my studio in Los Angeles, and I remember them telling me <laughs> the day they called and they said, well, we're coming in to do our engagement shoot, but we just got in a huge fight and we're really not happy to see each other right now. And <laughs> I was like, okay. And so uh, at my studio in LA, I had uh, a bar in the corner of the room and I had uh, different types of alcohol in there and I'd have customers bring me gifts and alcohol and. And so I started just accumulating them. And mostly I would use it to sit with my friends after work and we'd hang out, have a drink, whatever. Um, and so Heidi and Sam came in and I said, all right, they came in and I, I knew the situation. I said, how about a tequila shot before we start? So we all did tequila shots. They did a few more than I did. And, and then we did the engagement shoot and it really went well. And I just did some fun, creative studio stuff. I had. I had done a lot of maternity, um, uh, so I wanted to just do something like intimate. I had them hug, and, and by the end of the session, it was really great. Uh, the two of them, they were back, they were friends again, they were happy, and they really had a good time. So for me, it's like just one of those memorable experiences, um, you know, how something could have gone wrong or we might have had to reschedule. And, uh, and again, a challenge for me because normally I do it on location. So it was much more of a portrait session uh, in the studio. Now this image, I'm gonna show you a couple. There's about three that go together. So this was a first look for a wedding uh, that I did in New York. Um, and the, we were at the Taj, uh, which is um, right near Central Park, uh, right on the edge of Central Park. And um, I just previously done a first look with her father um, and then the groom came out and it was very windy that day and we were on this balcony like way high up so he walks out okay the next picture and then her veil blows off the big gust of wind came up right at that time and her veil blew off and he was like oh my gosh like if you look at the picture uh, on the right he's looking at her like oh my gosh what do I do <laughs> which I loved and then uh, so then in the final image this is actually it. It flew up above our heads. It swirled around a little bit and then the wind caught it and it took it away. A $2,000 veil that it just swooped off in the middle. And it was, for me, it was like the coolest thing that I'd ever seen. Like I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that just happened. But of course I was, I felt sad for the bride and everyone like kind of just didn't know what to do. But they quickly remedied the situations. Uh, someone in the wedding party ran to Bergdorf's and bought her another veil. Um, I, I heard someone say that was a $2,000 veil that blew away. Um, but it's such a great story. You know, yes, it's money and $2,000 is a lot of money. Uh, but I mean, it's such a great story and, uh, you know, something that they have for the rest of their life to share. And it's something that's never happened to me before. You know, I've been shooting wedding 30 years and I've had a lot of stories, but that's one to tell. All right, this next image. I'm going to give you just the image here. So this was, I was traveling and uh, on vacation. I got up early one morning. Of course, like you, if you love to take pictures, we all take pictures of other things than what we normally pho photograph, you know. Uh, sometimes I don't like to be classified as a wedding photographer. I just, I'm a photographer that can shoot weddings. Um, but of course, I've shot weddings my whole life. But this image I really love, nice fine art image. Uh, it was very foggy that morning, a lot of texture uh, in the pier um, 
And just with some simple composition, you know, putting the pier off to the right and the raft off to the left and the fog and making it black and white really made a huge difference uh, in this particular image and probably one of my favorite fine art images that I've shot in a long time. This image was many, many years ago uh, with one of my brides. All my brides are favorite, but uh, this was Jenna, and uh, she was just so fun. And uh, at the end of the night, like, she invited me, uh, you know, Robert, sit down with me and hang out and smoke a cigar. And so, you know, we hung out and <laughs> smoked a cigar. Um, I don't love cigars, but I indulged her for a little bit, and we took a picture. But I just love the joy in this image. Um, I just love the that she and I are like sitting together and having a good time. And I, I really try to have uh, personal relationships with my couples. And I really like when, when you have those couples and we all have them if you shoot weddings. You know, you do have your favorites, the ones that you really click with, the ones you really click with and have a good time. Uh, and Jenna was one of them. Uh, so I've always sort of loved this image and cherished it. Uh, so thought I'd share that with you too. All right, this image, I'm gonna show it to you without me in it. This is a getting ready image that I did, uh, and this was in a Sonoma Napa wedding. Um, I don't remember the winery. This was many years ago. Uh, this bride's name was Chi. And uh, to me, to this date, probably one of the, I think the sexiest, prettiest getting ready images that I'd taken is strictly a candid. She was putting her shoes on. I, I grabbed it really quick. Um, it's revealing, but it's not. Uh, the lighting is great. It's coming through the door. It was just one of those split second grabs. Um, and I really think that uh, this is such a beautiful image. And, and also it lends itself uh, a lot for black and white. Um, you know, I, I shoot digitally now. Uh, I switched to digital in 2003, but I shot film up until then. Um, and just there's three things to me that make an image great in black and white. So the first one is emotion. The second one is available light, which this one has. And then the other one is movement. So, you know, I used to shoot with two bodies, a color body and a black and white body. And, you know, one camera had color film, one had black and white film, and I had to pick and choose. And of course, now we can do that in post. Um, but so my criteria now for that is just uh, what I make black and white and what I don't, a lot of times revolves around those three things. Does the image have emotion in it? Is there movement? Or is there really beautiful available light um, and textures that will you know, make it work that way? So um, let me give it back to you. Uh, so yeah, probably one of my favorite natural light getting ready photos. Uh, this image was just fun. Uh, my studio's in LA in the San Fernando Valley for many, many, many years. And uh, I used to shoot for one of the local papers. Um, and so this shoot, uh, I got to shoot, um, uh, why am I blanking on his name? Um, comedian, <laughs> I want I was going to call it George Lopez. Um, and, uh, I actually shot this on the set of the George Lopez show. So I had to go to the studio. Of course they said, you have five minutes to do it, but, uh, the lighting's really beautiful because I just shot it on set. So George came over, he was very gracious. Um, I shot a picture with him and him and his wife at the time um, and just really quickly uh, hammered out a few shots and, and got out of there. So uh, again, sometimes the thrill of our job is just the rush of it and it seems like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Um, but I just trusted my instincts and, and did what I love to do and you know, took some nice pictures of him. So this image which you see the whole thing, is an engagement shoot that I did also uh, up in the Sonoma Valley area many years ago. Um, I believe this might even be film. And uh, the great story, there's always a story behind the image, right? There's why I'm doing this. But these two actually met at this winery when they both worked there when they were, uh, you know, younger, obviously before that they were married. And, um, you know, we walked around the winery, we did a few pictures, and then I saw this old truck with the barrels on it just sit, got them to sit up there and, and then I let the rest happen. A lot of times, uh, I don't try to pose a lot of things. You know, I suggest to my couples, hey, lean on the tree or you give each other a hug or one of those things. Um, but I was here just worrying about the composition. I wanted to be lower so that I saw 
um, you know, more of the truck. I wanted to be off to the side, so I got some depth in the barrels. And uh, they were just sitting up there laughing and talking, and, and I just started shooting. So um, really, really love this image. I mean, I think this could be a stock image, you know, somewhere, somehow. Um, but I just love the realness. Like, if you look at his expression in there, uh, you know, he's very real. Um, so is she, you know, laughing, and he's, like, whispering in her ear. Uh, you know, so these, you know, really great moment between these two. Here's another similar moment. Now this was uh, at a destination wedding that I shot down in Cabo. Uh, this was shot at a hotel called the Cabo Surf Hotel, which is a very tiny hotel, um, real close to the Palmilla, for those of you that are familiar with Cabo. And uh, this was actually the very first Cabo wedding that I've ever did. Again, many years ago, I've probably done 10 or 12 Cabo weddings. Uh, but this was right after the ceremony, and I had the couple grab some champagne and go sit out on the edge of the pool. A lot of the pools in Mexico have infinity pools, and so I had them sit right on the edge of the pool and, and toast and, you know, talk to them. And, and uh, I just like it. I like the simplicity of it. The pool, you get a little bit of their reflection. Uh, and again, for me, it reminds me of a time in life, like I mentioned, it was my first uh, destination uh, Cabo job, anyway. Now this is from the same wedding. Uh, let me give it to you so you don't see me in it. Um, and this was actually at the rehearsal dinner the night before, and the girls wanted to jump in the pool. And of course, it's just a fun image. I mean, who, who doesn't want to have fun You're at your rehearsal dinner? But I think what really makes it is the reflection. And uh, if you look, the one girl, uh, the third one in from the right, her foot's just making a little splash in the water, but otherwise you have that crystal clear reflection and the joy of the bride's face as, as they're all leaping in together with her bridesmaids. So really, really fun image. And that's it. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching and listening. Uh, there's one more episode to go, uh, show number eight. If you haven't seen the previous six, go back on the channel and watch them. Uh, you're going to see, again, these are my images from the last 30 years, some of my favorite images and the stories behind them. I'm Robert Evans. Thanks for watching. This is The Pixel Show.